So we're starting with 30 millimeter diameter of Ford Transit axle. This is so it's 95 millimeters long. We're gonna put it into the forge now. This is a ga gas forge I use, a Swan Porter forge made just at the road in Gloucester. Uh, taking it out now. First thing we're gonna do to it is put a square taper. And all the square tapers for is so that it fits into the hardy hole, so it's a nice snug fit. So basic four square taper, not a very steep angle, just quite a shallow angle really, just enough to get it in there. Right, try it in there, so it's not deep enough, so what I'm going to do is bring the taper further up towards the tongs, so that it sits a little bit deeper in then. I don't have to work the end of the taper, because I know that fits, so all I'm, all I'm working is the bits just below the tongs. Keep it nice and square, keep it nice and flat, doesn't have to be pretty, don't worry about the fish lipping. There you go, it's fitting. So now we just tidy it up a little bit more. So I'm bringing the taper up so it sits in the hole a bit deeper. Don't worry about brushing scale off or anything. There you go. Fits nicely. Now what we're going to do is put it in the hardy hole, tap it down a little bit, and then we're going to start giving it a little bit of welly, just so that some shoulders form on the ring bar. I'm not hitting this really, really hard, I'm just trying to set some shoulders before it cools down in the hole. So it's going to spread out, but we'll deal with that after in a minute. And just pop it out through the already hole. There you go, nicely done. So now where the bulges are, we're going to just do another square. Well, we're not even going to taper it, to be honest. We're just going to make it square. And take the bulge in out that we've caused from the upsetting. What I'm going to do with this is turn it into an octagon. So as you can see it's starting to fish lip at the minute. But it doesn't really matter because we're going to be putting it back into the hardy hole. And hitting it on the top again so that will flatten out what we're fish lipping. The reason I do an octagon is because when we hit it back into itself again it's going to want to go out again. So. We're going to make it octagon and then put it back in the hardy hole and give it a good upsetting again. So there you go, rough octagon. Don't have to be pretty. And tap it back into the hardy hole. And what we're going to do is set the shoulders again but while we're setting the shoulders that's going to take all that fish lipping out that we've just caused and doing the eight sides as well will sort of bulge out into itself again so it's not going to be as drastic as last time so the shoulders should be really nice at the minute Now we're going back again square. You just take the bulging out because obviously we got to taper this later on to get the car uh, to get the cutting edge. I'm just taking the most most amount of bulging out. You can see it fish lipping again, but we'll sort that out in a bit. 
and if it does really really go fish really cup and a lot of fish lip in then saw it out as you go and you can do that by sticking it on the end and hitting the square bit or putting it back in the already hole and just tapping it down So now we're just getting rid of the fish lipping. We're not trying to set it in or anything like that. We're just getting rid of the fish lipping. There you go. So now we start slightly tapering. So a steeper angle than before. And you're always going to get fish lipping if you don't do it at a real long arc so you see it's starting to go out into a V we just dress the side so it doesn't go really far out we're not forging it, we're just dressing the sides and then carry on with the taper Don't take the end of the hardy cut off too thin at this stage because as we're working it we're going to need to set the shoulders a little bit later again so we're going to need a nice thick edge that's going to take a bit of a beast in so if you put a thin edge on there it's just going to bend over so we keep it nice and thick all right now what i'm doing here is just setting it straight again so just above the shoulders I'm hitting it with a gap underneath so that it kicks the top over to a more central position still carry on with a taper get it nice and hot again Carry on with the taper, correct any fish lipping that's coming up by standing it on the end and upsetting the end again. There you go. Just correcting the fish lipping. But because I use a gas forge, I can't isolate the heat to where I want it to go. Whereas if I had a coke or a coal forge, then I could isolate the heat a bit more and not worry about messing everything else up. So this is me just stood there just carrying on but I wanted to show a wider angle just to show you that I'm not bent over and I'm not like jeopardising my back or anything like that. Just forging a nice calm collective It's only a one and three quarter pound shooter and an hammer. So you don't need big hammers, you just need posture. And bring your hammer up high as well. That get the inertia going to bring the hammer back up to the same sort of level, shoulder level. Then when you're doing the tapered sides, because it's splaying out at the top, you want to keep it at an angle when you're tidying the sides and dressing them in so now I'm just keeping it central again just hitting above where the shoulders are with a gap underneath and then I'll go and dress the sides again And then carry on with the taper again any any fish lipping again you've still got chance to hit it on the top when it gets too thin there's no chance hitting it on the top now I'm just dressing the square section because I'm going to try it in the hardy hole right so it doesn't fit where I've been 
working on it where I can't isolate the heat so I'll just bring that down a little bit more keep trying it as you go otherwise you take it too thin and it go too loose and just knock the corners off a little bit try it again Right, now we got a thick edge on the cutting edge so we can hit it and it's not going to bend over. So now I'm just centralising it by hitting it on the side. The more you can keep it central, the easier it's going to be later on when you come to finishing it. Now we're going to define the shoulders again. Little tap in. Let's keep going with this. At a nice hot heat. If it cools down a bit, heat it back up. Because this is the stage now where we get these shoulders set. See, it didn't didn't really fit there, so. What I'm going to do is take it in a little bit until it fits snug, then put it back in and really get them shoulders sat nice and snug to the anvil so it doesn't wobble around when you're working it. Doesn't have to be pretty, but it's always good to practice pretty. see the shoulders of the cutting edge they're hanging over the edge of the anvil so as I don't squash them in so it's nearly there now one more heat just to push the anvil just to push the hardy into the anvil just to set the shoulders there you go they're nicely set now so I'm just hitting it to the side now just to push the top over and centralize it and then carry on with the taper so you work at the far edge of the anvil you work in the point bit and then you want to come just past your shoulders just past the tongs and then work your way to the point like you're squeezing a tube of toothpaste Then just keep going with this until you're happy with it. It's bouncing around a little bit where the flats aren't actually 100% flat. When it stops bouncing, it means it's flat. So you can take it to the other side and do exactly the same. Because what you do on one side of the work is happening on the other side of the work exactly the same I sped this up a little bit so you just keep working it from the back to the front back to front side to side and then when it starts splaying too much you want to tidy your edges up keep it at an angle angle your hammer Give her some welly on the sides. So it kind of looks like an axe head. Or start of a fishtail scroll. It's starting to look like what we're after now. If you can try and keep the furthest edge, the cutting edge, as straight as you can, that's better for the end, really. So these are more refined blows rather than forging blows. All I'm doing is just trying to tidy it up. 
before I go in with the final uh, the final taper so it's forced to finish so we don't have to grind anything we're going to put a file on it but we're not going to put a grinder or a linishing belt or anything like that this is forced to finish So now we're getting there, the edge is getting thinner. The centre will always remain a little bit shallower and you'll get sort of ears coming off the corners. Don't worry about these because we're going to file that off in a bit. Or you could use a grinder or a linisher or whatever you've got handy. Then dress your sides again because every time you hit the front and the back your sides are going to bulge out. So you just need to keep them tidy and then run the edge on the flats just to tidy what you've just put in with the bulge. So we're nearly there. Well we are there. So now we just take a little rasp and we take that them little ears off. What I like with my hardies is them um, to be flat. We get it nice and flat, get it nice and tidy. Right, what you can see here is it's thinner in the middle and a bit thicker on the outside. So what we're going to do is heat it up again and then just mainly focus the hammer work on the edges rather than the centre just to get it all flush so there's going to be no grinding to get it to the right size not very heavy hammer blows just tippy tappy and just tidy it up a little bit So we're pretty much there now. It's pretty much finished. We've got to do a little tiny little bit of refining. And turn it over. So you're getting the anvil to do half the work for you. It's nearly there. So that's pretty much finished. All we got to do now is put a cutting edge of whatever you like. I like a really steep angle. Almost the same as the angle of the actual chamfer of the hardy cut off. So it sort of follows it through. So again, this is for transit axle, which will hold up good enough for cutting hot, hot metal. So now we're going to harden it. I'm just using used motor oil for this. I keep the edge there a little bit longer than the body. Let the body get past mag magnetized state. So that it will hold a magnet so it's not as hard as the cutting edge. Just keep it moving so there's no oxygen around. This is sped up a little bit. I've skipped forward about a minute. You take it out and you've got a nice hard hot cut hardy. I don't put a temper on it because the temper would just get lost when I'm doing this. And I just test it out, see how well the edge holds. This is a piece of 16 millimeters round bar, mild still. And it's eating through it pretty well, nice and slow. And then come the harder blows. Just working it to the center.
So if you've liked this video and you like watching it, then check out my other videos. Like, share, subscribe, comment. Do whatever you please, but thanks a lot for watching. And there you go. Ready to be pulled off. Sort of. Have a good day, folks. Thanks for watching.